what is the origin of this artery? The artery here is the common carotid artery. It's located in the carotid triangle, a subdivision of the anterior triangle of the neck. And this artery is going to divide into external and internal carotid arteries. The artery here, the common carotid artery, is on the right side, and so it's a branch of the brachiocephalic trunk. The brachiocephalic trunk provides the right common carotid and right subclavian arteries, while if it was on the left side there, it will be a branch, the left common carotid will be a branch of the arch of the aorta, a direct branch of the arch of the aorta, because the arch of the aorta, usually it gives three branches. The first branch is the brachiocephalic, which provides the right common carotid and right subclavian, and then it gives the left common carotid and left subclavian arteries separately. Name the skull process to which this muscle is attached. The muscle here is the muscle of the neck that divides the neck into anterior and posterior triangles. It is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. You can see the origin of the muscle here. It's from the sternum clavicle, so it is sternocleido, and then it's attached to the mastoid process of the temporal bone. So hence the name sternocleidomastoid. Which muscle is causing this tenting up appearance of Gilliam Michael's neck? The muscle is the platysma muscle. It's a wide, flat, subcutaneous muscle that extends from the fascia of our pectoralis major and deltoid and extends upwards and medially to reach the inferior border of the mandible and the skin of the lower face. It tenses the skin of the neck, draws the corners of the mouth inferiorly, and may also assist in depressing the mandible during violent, deep inspiration. Men commonly use this muscle during tightening their collar button or during shaving. The muscle as a muscle of facial expression is supplied by the facial nerve, and to be specific, it is the cervical branch of the facial nerve. Identify the bones A, B, and C. What do they collectively form? A is the maxilla, and this process is called the zygomatic process of the maxilla. B is, is the zygomatic bone, so this is the zygomatic process of the maxillary bone. B is the maxillary bone itself, and C is another zygomatic process but belongs to the temporal bone. And so the three of them together, they will form the zygomatic arch. Which muscle is responsible for the appearance of these wrinkle lines? These lines that form in the lateral canthal region are called crow's feet, and they are caused by contraction of orbicularis oculi muscle. The orbicularis oculi muscle is the sphincter mechanism that is located around the orbit and consists of concentric loops of muscle fibers that surround the orbit and are also located in the eyelid. The palpebral part closes the eyes gently, as in sleep or blinking, while the orbital part lowers the eyebrows to shade the eye from bright light. Both parts act together. They close the eye forcibly as during a dust storm. Identify the process A, which dural fold is attached to it. Now, this is a view of the sphenoid bone separated from the other bones. The sphenoid means wedge-shaped, so this bone is wedged between other bones, and it has a complicated shape and form and multiple processes and surfaces. It looks like a butterfly here. This is the body of the sphenoid, and it has two pairs of wings. So this is the lesser wing of the sphenoid, and here's the greater wing of the sphenoid. Now, Process A is located at the posterior end of the lesser wing of the sphenoid, and it's called the anterior clinoid process. So here, these are two anterior clinoid processes located at the posterior end or medial end of the lesser wing of the sphenoid, and these are the two posterior clinoid processes that are located at the superior lateral part of the dorsum celli. To these clinoid processes, whether anterior or posterior, is attached a piece of dura mater that looks like a diaphragm. So it's a, like a diaphragm of the cella torsica, hence it's called the diaphragma celli. And it is perforated by the stalk of the pituitary gland. For amen B, 
is a foramen within the sphenoid bone. It's oval in shape, hence the name foramen ovale. And this foramen transmits the mandibular nerve and the lesser petrosal nerve on their way to the infratemporal fossa. The lesser petrosal nerve is the nerve that carries the parasympathetic fibers, which originated in the glossopharyngeal nerve. It carries them from the tympanic plexus to the otic ganglion, which is located in the infratemporal fossa. So the answer for B is that it's foramen ovale and the parasympathetic nerve fibers are those that are located in the lesser petrosal nerve and not in the mandibular nerve because the mandibular nerve carries motor and sensory fibers, somatic motor and sensory fibers. Which of the sinuses 1 to 4 does not open into the middle nasal meatus? First of all, we have to identify the sinuses, the four pairs of paranasal sinuses. So one is the frontal sinus. It is located within the frontal bone and extends into the roof of the orbit. Two are the ethmoid air cells, which are located between the nose and the orbit. And you can see them here as well. Three is the maxillary sinus. You can see it in the lateral view and the frontal view as well. And four is the other sinus, which is located in the body of the sphenoid. Here is the and body of the sphenoid shown in the lateral view. You can see the cella torsica here above it. And these are the posterior and anterior clinoid processes, which are connected by the diaphragma celli. Now, which of these sinuses does not open into the middle nasal meatus. In the lateral one of the nose, we have superior, middle, and inferior concha, and superior, middle, and inferior meatus, as well as a sphenoethmoidal recess, which is located above the superior meatus. The frontal sinus opens into the middle meatus, into the hiatus semilunaris of the middle meatus. Maxillary sinus opens into the middle meatus, into the posterior part of the hiatus semilunaris. The ethmoidal air cells, there are three groups of ethmoidal air cells. So the anterior ethmoidal air cells, they open into the superior meatus, not in the middle. But the middle ethmoidal air cells and the anterior ethmoidal air cells, they open into the middle meatus. So we are not sure here, that we are not certain about whether two indicates the middle or the anterior or the posterior ethmoidal air cells. But the anterior ethmoidal air cells and middle ethmoidal air cells, they open into the middle meatus. We are left here with the sphenoid sinus only, that definitely it doesn't open into the middle meatus. It opens into the sphenoethmoidal recess of the nose. Which nerve is surgically exposed in this procedure? This procedure is for the surgical excision of the parotid gland. You can see the auricle here. And this is the S-shaped incision on the side of the face, exposing the parotid gland. And there is a dissection of the nerve, the facial nerve. The facial nerve leaves the skull through the stylomastoid foramen, enters the substance of the parotid gland, and divides into branches that unite and then rebranch again to form the five groups of muscular branches that supplies the muscles of facial expression. It is very difficult to be separated from the substance of the parotid gland. That's why a very meticulous dissection has to take place during surgery in order to avoid injury of the facial nerve. Such complication is common in this type of surgery and results in paralysis of some of the muscles of facial expression. Now here we are required to match the numbers with the lettered items. So let's identify the lettered items. This is uh, an anterior view of the sphenoid bone. You can see the body of the sphenoid in the middle containing the sphenoid air sinuses, so including C. And the sphenoid bone has lesser wings and greater wings. So A is the lesser wing, B is the greater wing. And here it's forming uh, this surface is to the lateral wall of the orbit. And D and E are the lateral and medial pterygoid plates. D is the lateral pterygoid plate and E is the medial pterygoid plate. Provides attachment for medial pterygoid muscle. And this is the lateral pterygoid plate. In fact, the lateral pterygoid plate provides attachment for lateral pterygoid and medial pterygoid muscles. 
the medial pterygoid plate is located in the lateral wall of the nose and it provides attachment for the pharyngobasilar fascia. So one provides attachment for the medial pterygoid is D. Attachment for lateral pterygoid again it's D. So D is sandwiched between the two pterygoid muscles. Is located in the lateral wall of the nose that's E medial pterygoid plate. Is located in the lateral wall of the orbit that is B the greater wing of the sphenoid forms part of the floor of the anterior cranial fossa and this is A actually it is the posterior boundary of the anterior cranial fossa this is the lesser wing of the sphenoid forms part of the floor of the middle cranial fossa this is C the body of the sphenoid bone which its upper part forms the cella torsica pituitary fossa and this is the central part of the middle cranial fossa.